internet friends. Welcome to another episode of the Synergy Cafe online show featuring speaker, entertainer, close-up illusionist, and marketing alchemist, Magic Brad. It's the internet lifestyle show about career, finance, relationships, spirituality, and wellness. We're moving the online chatter over to real life activity. And now, please welcome your host of Synergy Cafe, Magic Brad. Hey, internet friends, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative. And I've got a friend from the East Coast. His name is Tom Lavecki. Are you there, Tom? Yes, sir. Yay. So, um, is it cold over there? It is 16 degrees today in New Jersey. Yeah, we're supposedly having the coldest day in the last 10 years. Now, well, 16 sure. degrees is nothing for you guys, but for us it's cold. Yeah, but it gets to the 90s and 100s over here, just so you know, if you've never been to Minneapolis, it gets pretty really? warm. A lot of people don't know it, but it gets warm in the summer. Interesting. So, um, I do these interviews kind of fast. It's just to get to know who you are and things of that sort. So you're from New Jersey and you're married, you got kids? Yes, uh, married with two children. Boy and a girl? A girl, uh, Felicia, who's seven years old, and a boy named Giuseppe. How did I know? I read your mind. I'm psychic or psychotic, one of the two. Okay. <laughs> so how long you lived in Jersey? Lived my entire life. Uh, my family uh, emigrated from Italy in uh, the 50s, late 50s. Um, I was born here in the U.S. and I lived in New Jersey my entire life. Okay, Italian. So you're a good guy to know. Uh, depends. <laughs> depends. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I get it. So what kind of business are you in? That's kind of the essence of what we talk about here. We talk about five different areas of career, finance, relationships, spirituality, and wellness. Those kind of all blend together. So if you could share a little bit about what you got going down in the world. Absolutely. So, so I'm the president and founder of uh, X Factor Media. We are a digital marketing company here out of, uh, outside of New York City. Uh, our focus is a little bit more on the health and beauty space. We work with a lot of uh, plastic surgeons, uh, medical spas, and so forth. And uh, more recently, we branched out and launched an online platform called NewTheory.com, which is an online lifestyle magazine that focuses on millennials. So it's a little bit out of the scope and fray of our initial uh, launch, but we wanted to um, get a little bit deeper into media. And um, New Theory is a little older, a little over than a year old. Well, you, uh, like we chatted a little bit earlier, the stuff changes constantly on the internet. I mean, I was used doing these interviews on Skype, then I guess Microsoft bought Skype, and now it doesn't work with my call recorder software, so I said, heck with it, and just jump somewhere else. And that's what we have to do as entrepreneurs these days, and be flexible and be ready to turn the ship when we have to. That, that's correct. So so when we launched New Theory, and um, it was with a blessing and a curse, we had a, an article go viral. So the first month, in a half, we had about 300,000 visitors that we didn't pay for any traffic. Wow. Um, and, we could do, and we could do no wrong. We could do no wrong. Um, and it really killed it. But one thing is, in retrospect, we didn't really monetize it um, the way we could have and should have. So I really thought it was going to last longer than it did. Um, the other thing is, in, when I initially launched, um, I under-resourced uh, by having kind of a skeleton crew. And then later on, I over-resourced by having a staff of almost six on the project with really little or no money coming in with the hopes of monetizing it later. So um, we almost, uh, on one end, we got again a half million views within three, four months unpaid. Um, and then on the other end, um, almost went out of business because we just had uh, the wrong people on the bus along with just um, just uh, not not uh, not planning for the dynamic part of the business. We, cr we focus on content, you hear content is king, content is emperor, you hear that all the time. Uh, but the reality is, um, if the content doesn't get you visitors and the visitors don't get you advertisers and the money's not coming in, um, it's not happening. So at that point, cash is still king. Yeah, a lot of people are being misled by the, the, the content and the SEO factor of things. And what really boils down, in my opinion, is the relationship. Because if you got the relationship, it doesn't matter where you are and what kind of words you use. You know, if you spell something wrong, it doesn't matter. It still comes out of the, like you guys say, cow over there, right? Instead of car. <laughs> We said car. That, okay. That's more Boston. Um, the Boston? Also, I, I pride myself on being a bit more educated uh, in <laughs> MBA, so hopefully I can see a little better. So uh, that, that, car. that kind of language doesn't work in SEO kind of stuff because when people may talk things through, they might say Boston and they do it B-W-O-S-T-O-N, so that might come out weird and then you wouldn't get any Boston business. <laughs> right. You actually, you actually hit the nail on the head. Um, so we, we are primarily, as a digital marketing firm, a um, 
we're an SEO firm at heart and soul, and we're good at it. Actually, we're great at it in the space that we're in. So when we launched uh, NewTheory.com, the whole play was to um, get a lot of organic traffic, because at the end of the day, traffic's traffic, and organic traffic's actually better in terms of engagement, reliability, and even conversion. So the theory was to have a ton of organic traffic, not as much paid traffic, and then we could appreciate it in the margins when we advertise. And the truth be told is we bought a 14-year-old domain. Um, we It was white hat. We checked it out. We got backlinks from Forbes, uh, HuffPo, um, Business Insider, all earned, um, all white hat. And uh, essentially the SEO, although it grew and it's growing, we still had to buy traffic. And by buying traffic, whether you like it or not, as a cost, and then you also have to pay for the content. So just there's no way to uh, ethically advertise because mm-hmm. um, we don't pull the whole, you know, hey, we have a half million visitors a month and start charging for advertising when it's really only 50,000. A lot of people do that, unfortunately, in the digital space. We don't do that because there's too many tools out there uh, to begin with, and it's just the wrong thing to do. So we we underestimated um, the SEO traffic uh, on a digital media play, and uh, frankly, it, it burnt me in the butt. Well, um, this is just an analogy that happened in my head, but I think that you can have your organic traffic going forward with things, and then once in a while you can do some paid advertising as like a booster, and you can kind of steer the ship wherever you want to steer it. Well, right. correct, correct. Now, so, now, now, the other thing is, to, to be fair, paid advertising or, or paid media um, is kind of a dirty word in, in the digital marketing space for a media company, because theoretically you're supposed to write a great article and it's supposed to you know, go viral, right? But a lot of things that you don't talk about is the manip- not manip- manipulation, but the change in the Facebook algorithm. So right. in the past, if I if I send an article out, Brad likes it, most people see it, some like it, some share it, and it moves on. But obviously, Facebook wants to make money, so less people see it, so therefore you have to pay to boost it. So within paid is different channels, right? You have PPC, you have um, uh, boost posts, um, you have also uh, blog amplifiers like the Bulla and Outbrain. Uh, but the truth of the matter is you have to try to just get arbitrage if you can by getting the traffic for as little as possible and selling the traffic for as high as possible. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, you know, the days of just putting on AdSense and, 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 and getting mailbox right. money is not the case. You have to do branded content. Um, you have to do, you know, uh, paid ads uh, and so forth. But you really need the traffic in order to do it. Yeah, I was uh, just watching a video. Gary Vaynerchuk was talking about how the – the big box brands, they have not quite yet grasped this whole online thing. They're still spending a lot of money on traditional media. But when Correct. they get it, they're going to start spending a lot of money in there. So the ad cost of ads is going to go way, way up. And yep. we have to be ready for that. Are you doing anything on Facebook? Uh, we are. Our, our Facebook, again, so so we're, we're organic. You know, you could buy likes or you could post. And what we try to do in terms of a strategy, instead of just getting a lot of likes to the page, we work to build community by getting right. traffic. So it was working for a bit, but when you build community, you kind of have one option or the other. Do I get Brad to like the page? And then again, even if you have a thousand followers, you're lucky if only a hundred see it. So we didn't really see as much value in that. We try to get Brad to come to the site, yep. check out the article, and then share it there from a, from a native uh, part. Um, it worked for a bit, but the community took a long time to build, and um, it just couldn't sustain. So we only have probably about 1,100 um likes on Facebook, uh, which is not a lot, uh, uh, considering we had over a million unique visitors well, like uh, within one year. I've yeah. said before, likes don't pay the bills. I mean, well, that, that, it's that's just a, a click. Point. It's you very... know, that, that, that's a point. And, and the other part is where I made a really big mistake is on the digital marketing side, things were going well. So I kind of put a lot of those resources into my new venture. And it was really like a brand new startup, a brand new entity. And um, it, ju- it just, it just, it just, it just, I, 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 just couldn't sustain. So we're relaunching. Um, and ironically, with less staff, with less overhead, with less resources, our traffic is way up. And um, we're starting to sell ads and branded content without without any, without any issue. Uh, to me, I think the idea of branded content um, is a little better because it is um, paid media. It is paid media. You pay us to uh, do the editorial. But we represent it as such as branded content. We don't, you know, we follow the FTC rules. And um, that seems to be going pretty well. 
Well, that's that's pretty cool. That what you're saying is resonating because I'm working with a friend of mine, Ron Orr. I call him the Oracle because he's able to read right into this stuff and figure things out with percentages and all that. And him and I are doing some stuff with Facebook ads where we reinvest, not the money, but the, the traffic. So it grows. Yes. So we've got like a, a list and we're, we're targeting this 25%. And as the list grows, the 25% actually gets bigger and bigger. So we're reinvesting. So it's compounding. And it's all about that brand and building that relationship because... Correct. You know, once uh, once Facebook decides to shut things down, I want people to know Magic Brad. <laughs> well, that that's one of the challenges, though, because sometimes when you community build, you're necessarily building their community, not yours, right? Because right. you they get more likes, that brings them to their platform, not yours. You get more followers, it brings them to their platform and not yours. Yep. Um, so what we, we we're trying to do is build community by ancillary sites as well. Stumble upon Reddit, and I don't call it ancillary because it's not small, but it's small in comparison. The daily active users then versus Facebook and maybe Instagram, but we're trying to hit those. But the challenge with that is you can get a you can get great traffic from StumbleUpon. I really think it's an underutilized uh, resource. Right. I use However, it. they tend to not stay in the site. So we have you know about two thousand subscribers on the back end. Again, it should be more. We own that. That's why we're trying to fix it. Uh, but to capture the subscribers and build community, it, it's tough. It's tough. That's why we're revamping and trying to um, come up better organically. And we're trying to use social media a little better. But the, the good news is um, it's starting to work. And uh, we envision New Theory relaunching and, and being where it should be. We want to be the voice. Uh, although I'm a little older than the millennial and the Gen Xer. But uh, we feel that the millennial, um, we call the mature millennial, is underserved in terms of content. It's either you have Elite Daily, which is great. And you know they sold out for $50 million. And you know, God bless. Uh, but we tend to see it being a bit sophomoric in terms of content. Um, and then, we, you know, somebody who's a little bit older as a millennial probably wants to see something that's still maybe fun and cheeky, but also relative to their, um, uh, to their, life, their life, their lifestyle. And that's where we want to live. Well, it would be fun to do uh, another one of these more on a specific topic uh, maybe later because um, there's, there's some of the stuff you're talking about is very similar to what I'm doing, like stumble upon. And what I do with these is I... I record this like this, and I pop it up to YouTube. Then I use all those little share buttons on YouTube yes. to send it out to stumble upon. Then I put that YouTube onto another platform called Staged, and I do that again, but I do it later, maybe a week later or so. Yeah. So I'm How, doing what, it. What, what's work? What's working for you? Um, you're obviously kind of like New Theory. You're looking to build um, your community. What's working? What's not working? Because I think one of the things Video. that probably is going to take away is. Um, is basically somebody who's watching this, an entrepreneur who's about to jump in to the digital space. Um, uh, I wish I knew then what I knew now, um, but uh, what, what's working for you, Brad? Well, I know what, you're interviewing me, but what's working for you? Well, what's working for me is, is video like this and uh, my brand of Magic Brad, and I've got the Synergy Cafe and Synergy Collaborative, so I'm, I'm capturing those names and those words and uh, putting it out on multiple platforms, having things out on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn and Google Plus and StumbleUpon and Reddit and just putting things in different places so those words are all over the place. And yeah. doing multiple interviews like this, people like yourself, this Synergy Collaborative that I put together, you will, of course, probably share this because we're having a, you know, a synergistic relationship here. So Correct. you provide me with content, I put it out there, you put it out there, and then you might see it on Google Plus and you might like it or share it or comment it. If you think about all these platforms, there's three things that they all pretty much have. Like, comment, share. They've all got yeah. that common thing. And that's it's about building the community. I used to think of three different things. Lead, relationship, sale. Now I think the lead and the sale is nothing. It's the relationship that takes the time. And once you have the relationship, the sale happens like that. Correct. So, again, you know it is. It's, it's the cost of acquisition is born up front. And the cost of retain is much less. Mm -hmm. um, the only challenge, though, is I think at least for digital media, and again, I I'd like to categorize Magic Bread as digital media, if that's okay, along with new theory. One of the challenges is in the, in the old days, you would buy a newspaper, you know, USA Today, uh, uh, the local Daily Journal, uh, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, etc. And then whatever was ever within that platform, you tended to um, you tended to stick with, right? Because it's in that magazine or it's in that periodical. Where digital media is a little different, you may hear about something that happened to Lady Gaga or whoever, and you'll Google it, and then kind of whatever ranks first will go to, so you go to that news source, whether it be New York Post or whatever that is, and then you'll go to that news source, look at it, maybe click somewhere else, and then leave, but 
probably not go back to that news source, but go back to Google to serve up what's, you know, what your interest is. Right. That's one of the challenges. The loyalty is really not there as much as you think and subscribers and all that great stuff. So, so you really got to crank out a lot of content. And again, I don't care whether you use free contributors or paid contributors or paid staff. Content is expensive and great content is even more expensive. So, well, so that's if anybody's looking to get into the space, um, just just you know, plan for it. On that note, um, I'm going to ask you to share uh, how to get a hold of you and such, but then I want to ask my favorite question. But before I even say that, um, what we're doing is we're, we're developing a brand or developing a relationship, and we're doing that at the same time as the acquisition. So that's why I do these videos, and that blends a relationship. So you know that I'm a real person. I'm, I'm human. I'm not some scammer from over in Sri Lanka or something. Correct, correct. So that's how so, we're building it out. Yeah. Well, so, so I can be found on newtheory.com, which is our uh, magazine website, and on Twitter and Instagram, at the sales expert, at the sales expert, I can be found there. And um, just hit the contact button on any of them and feel free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to, um, to uh, help any way I can, or if you're looking to get more press. So the other thing is we're actually pretty good uh, in terms of PR, and that's why I started my own online platform. We also have the mm -hmm. insider list as well, insiderlist.com. We have some properties that we manage because I was just tired of pitching other publicists or pitching editors or paying for space. But why don't we just create our own space? So that was kind sure. of why we did it. Um, so Brad, so so from your end, right? How do you, if you don't mind me asking, how do you monetize your brand? Is it we get advertisers for Magic Brad? Is there a service post relationship? What um, what? Uh, how are you looking to expand your brand and how do you monetize it? I've got a very affordable membership right now to be involved with this Synergy Collaborative. And then I've got different uh, sites that have advertising for it. And then we have clients that we do this advertising for them and utilizing our list and then utilizing their content and yeah, their exactly. brand to build the list. And then so it, our target is mostly like lifestyle entrepreneurs in a belief that People don't need to have that job anymore. They can basically be entrepreneurial and create a lifestyle in those five areas of career, finance, relationships, spirituality, and wellness. So that's the area that we work in, and that's how we monetize. Got it. And then, uh, so let's just say you, you you want or need a contributor. Does the person contribute for free? Do you pay them? Do they pay you? How do, how do, you, um, how do you work that model? Initially, these things are for free because it synergistically works. You provide content, I provide promotion, so there is no... Got it. But if you wanted to get deeper, I've got a cooperative, um, like co-op ad kind of thing. We'll, we'll um, match the ads that you spend because then, you know, the rising tide lifts all boats kind of thing. That's right. And then the well, membership thing. I'll definitely, put, um, I'll definitely put this on newtheory.com. Uh, and those that will be watching this on New Theory, hopefully you're still watching through. Um, it's, it's, you know, again, we, we want to be uh, the voice uh, for the mature millennial. And um, we have over a thousand articles, um, some of which do quite well, one of which um, went worldwide and viral. It was about how millennials do not go to nightclubs anymore. Um, and the truth of the matter is from a brand perspective, and Gary V talks about this all the time, nobody's really getting millennials. And I hate to call them millennials because they don't want to be called millennials. Just that generation is a little younger than me. They see through the BS and they don't, you know, they don't right. like paid advertising. And they like, uh, and I always mess with this word, genuinity or genuineness, either way. Yeah. Um, I think you get the point. Being and, genuine, um, being authentic. Apply, so. Authentic, transparent, genuine. Correct. Yeah. And that's our goal, and that's what we're trying to provide. Perfect. Well, let me ask my favorite question, then I'm going to sign this one off and uh, put it in the can and propagate it out to the world. So the first, the, the, my final question is the big why question. Why are you doing this? Why aren't you like a cab driver, or why aren't you like doing an working a tour bus yeah, or something. I, Why I are you doing this? For 20, yeah, I worked in corporate for 20 years. Um, so I, I, did, I, I did corporate for a very long time, did very well, candidly, and, 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 and was good. I was good, for a while, was good with my resources. So, so it afforded the opportunity for le at least roll the dice um, for entrepreneurship. And then at this point, it's about um, you know, freedom, and it's about just having the ability to do kind of what I want when I want within reason. We always have a boss, right? Our clients, uh, but to have a little bit more flexibility. And then in the digital space, I just saw a gap where, um, you know, we deal a lot with plastic surgeons on the media side, on the marketing side, that they were just spending a lot of money and kind of getting robbed or, or not spending a lot of money and under utilizing their resources. Mm -hmm. So I saw a little niche there and it's been, been going pretty well. Um, and then on the media side for new theory, um, the reason why I do it is, uh, 
Um, I just think right now, um, not that we can compete with New York Times, but the cool thing is, with done correctly, our articles do appear on HuffPo, on Business Insider. And I'm just like a kind of a lowly guy from New Jersey who, uh, who uh, you know, got some content together and we're competing on the big stage. So that kind of excites me as well. Okay, well, uh, let's do another one of these. It sounds like we've got a lot of commonalities, but I appreciate you today taking the time to be on Synergy Cafe and working with the Synergy Collaborative. So thank you very much, Tom. Peace. Excellent, Brad. Be well. Thank you.